Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We are live on Free Sports TV from the Lemon Tree here in Aberdeen. And it's the final day of the 2019 Town Shootout season. It's grand final day, 10 more round robin group matches to go this afternoon. And then we'll be back tonight for eight quarter finals, four quarter finals even with eight players in them, two semis and a final, and one winner of the Gary Forbes Trophy later on tonight. So let's meet our next two players, introducing a very familiar face to this town shootout event, a man who has reached three quarterfinals in this shootout series. He is Mr. Magic. He's Mark Boyle. And Mark's opponent, a man enjoying a very fine season. Has he got a couple more tricks up his sleeve here at the Lemon Tree this afternoon? Let's find out as we welcome into the arena David McNamara. <laughs> Well, here we go, the final 10 matches from the qualifying groups. Mark Boyle, one of the best in the business, versus Dave McNamara. Scotland versus England, and it's a crucial stage in this group. Mark Boyle sits top of the group with four points from his two matches, two wins to date. Simon Fitzsimmons in second place with four points, but he's played the extra match. Dave McNamara in third with two. Barry Nicholl and Mike Clark fourth and fifth but also with two points Mike Clark has played out so he is out of the competition but it could be any two from the other four so this is a key match both Mark Boyle and David McNamara will be playing twice this afternoon Dave McNamara was in great form with his match earlier on today, beating his good friend Simon Fitzsimmons, getting his campaign underway, disappointing loss for him yesterday. Mark Boyle has yet to play today, his two matches were yesterday, and they were both fairly comfortable victories. As George Riley rejoins me in the commentary box. Great atmosphere in there, Simon. Only about half full, I think that will steadily increase to a, a packed house for the quarter-final to final shootout tonight. But those who are in there making some noise and I looking down the list really looking forward to this afternoon it looks like a really heavyweight 10 matches we've got in a row and we've plenty to play for as well because these guys are playing to play tonight in the show session if you like yeah going to be crucial matches all the way through I think we've got well, we're looking for eight qualifiers two are confirmed I think we've got six qualifiers still to find from our groups and Three or four of the groups are incredibly tight. This is going to be a pretty good battle all the way through these 10 matches this afternoon. Well, Mark Boyle with the first opportunity. I think he's just about OK. I think he's on the red. I think it goes past the black to the top left. Not sure he's on anything else. Maybe just about on the one he's nearest to. It may sneak into the centre pocket. So he may have a couple of options. But the red nearest the left centre pocket is his big problem ball. I'm not sure if Mark was trying to make that off the black or just cover the pocket. Either way, it's worked out really nicely for him. Gives him a foothold in this frame.
Both these guys, as I've already said, will be playing twice this afternoon. Mark Boyle will be playing the other seed in this group, Simon Fitzsimmons, to round off his campaign. And Dave McNamara has a match-up with Barry Nicholl. He can take a lot of pressure off himself by winning this one, Mark. If Mark wins this, he's through. He'll have enough points. He won't be able to won't be able to have two people go past him. So he'll do, he'll have done enough. He will not want to go into that Simon Fitzsimmons match needing anything from it. Doesn't want to pop this red. That's a mistake. Mm. Yeah, this is uh this is not nice, suddenly. Oh, he's put himself under all sorts of pressure. He's having to dig right down on this. This Anything could happen here. Made the contact. Oh, has he tied up those two yellows? I think he'll be pleased with that leave. He's left an impossible table. He's going to be in trouble. Or, or is he? That's not the best shot that David McNamara has ever played. Has he left the red? I think he has. It's not, I don't think Mark's considering the pot. I can definitely see the red. Well, there's no real value in knocking it in, is there? Well, he did go for it, forced it, and got nothing. And he nudged open those yellows just a fraction more. Left David McNamara on the yellow to the left centre. Cluster at the bottom a bit congested, so this first shot could be the, the really tricky one. Oh, he sort of pinched the pocket with some spin to get that white to where he has. That's an excellent shot. Looks simple, but really good use of the pocket. It's a bad miss that lets Mark off the hook. If it, even if he doesn't fancy going for this finish, he can put a red into this bottom left-hand corner and, and take some control in this frame. If it goes, he may take it on because the two reds that would be left would be a simple plant to the left centre. Well, covering that pocket suddenly means that five of David's balls aren't really possible. Unless he can get behind them. He was leaving that a little bit to look. Some way off the mark. Trying to get... Well, trying to pot the red over the bottom left off the top cushion. Difficult to judge the angles on those shots, but he was a long way away. Mark content to play tactical here. He holds the upper hand already in that tactical battle. Because of having covered that pocket where all Dave's yellows are. That's a great cut and he's freed two of them. He's going to need another good shot or two though. He may fancy the skill shot in this bottom left hand corner. Yellow onto red. Have the yellow follow it in. Played the cut with so much side. Very well played. Now then, this is the key shot. Into it he goes, and he's knocked in the red. Well, I think the yellow goes past the red to the bottom corner. I'm not sure how he gets nicely onto the next yellow, and the black at the top of the table still doesn't go. So this is still massively odds against for David McNamara. Yeah, to any of our viewers wondering why that wasn't a foul, it was a legal shot, point his first, both went in. Now suddenly, 
Is it Advantage Dave? The shot that Mark played a couple of visits ago where he covered the black didn't seem that important at the time, but now it's proving to be quite pivotable. Pivotal. Can't talk all of a sudden. Pivotal. I think that is a word, isn't it? The ability to pivot. I mean, it's certainly not the right word you were, you were looking for, but... As long as people know what I mean, <laughs> we were okay with it. <laughs> Been a lengthy opener, this, hasn't it? Eight minutes of hit and miss tactical play. What's the end result? It's probably the longest we've had without a score on the board. I don't think this black goes. I don't think he can make it off the red either. No, it definitely doesn't go. So how's he going to uh, deal with this? Yeah, just the push. And that's not bad. Forcing Mark Boyle to play this red. And it's difficult for him to play safe off it. That's a really good shot. Pretty, pretty much all that Mark Boyle could do was rest on the black. This match could end 1-0. I don't think we've ever, all season, had the first frame of a match go to the half shot clock. Well, I've not seen it. I don't think that's happened. Certainly not happened so far this weekend. We could be down. So it's 30 seconds a shot, halves to 15 at the halfway point. So the 10 minute mark in these 20 minute matches. And that's going to happen in this first frame of the match. Unheard of. No. Well, the thing it does, it puts extra pressure onto this shot. But this frame, I mean, it, the winner at the first frame of the match is always huge in such a short format. But this could be, I mean, we were, you were semi-joking about this being the only, you know, this could be 1-1-0. One, one, but it realistically could be if the next frame is a tactical one as well. Had no option there. Had to take it on. Mark Boyle. It was all or nothing. It's going to be all. Just has to drag down on the white. And it's going to be the first frame to Mr Magic. A ten minute frame. And there we go. 15 second shot clock. A little laugh from Mark. You are, you are kidding, he says. Well, he won't care because he's taken the first frame and now he has the lead with only 10 minutes for his opponent to reverse it. First blood, Mark Boyle. It was a frame that he always felt Mark Boyle had control in. He had a couple of key areas sewn up most of the way through it. Just a matter of time before he got the opportunity that he did. Decent effort from David McNamara to try and force an opening, but wasn't able to do so. Mark has come up dry and it's a very good opportunity for David McNamara to respond very quickly. These yellows are wide open. No clusters, no problems. Not a huge amount of traffic either. The form that David McNamara has been showing this year, he will really fancy taking these out. Yeah, I think we're going to go from a 10-minute frame to a one-minute frame. And that's why we love Paul. Looks deceptive on screen. I wonder if that yellow goes to the bottom right. I don't think it does. Doesn't need it to. No. 
He's got three other options for the uh, for the last remaining yellow, depending on what he does with the cue ball. Just holds it anyway. He'll just push up behind the black here. Into the top left. And after uh, a lengthy, patient opener, this has been much more like it as McNamara responds for 1-1. One, one. We've seen two sides of the game in these opening two frames, the tactical battle, then the clearance from the break. Great response from David. And this match is back in the balance. With a few minutes, well, what have you got? Six, seven minutes to go, just a bit, just over. Plenty of time for a couple more frames. David's turn to come up dry. Very similar looking table to the one that Mark left David in the previous frame. I need to get a wriggle on. I'm thinking, I was going to say, I'm thinking Red's here. He's not. I don't think he fully had time to really consider what he wanted, but the yellows aren't too bad. Red's are pretty nice. I think it was either colour set this time round. Well, yellows were certainly the easier opener. If he lacked thinking time, that's why he's gone that way. I was just looking at the clutter of three reds to get position on those around them, but let's see. It's a fairly natural layout. He's been left. Doesn't have to move the white a huge amount. Could be a tricky problem if he takes the two yellows nearest the black next two shots he's got the yellow nearest the left middle it's not easy to get on the yellow at the bottom of the table off that ball if he takes it to the centre pocket yeah that's why he's forced that one a bit but he's still going to have to try and draw around avoiding the cluster of reds and not hit the yellow, which is what, exactly what he's done. That's what I was worried about. And suddenly the frame's wide open again. Yeah, it was just that previous couple of shots. He actually probably would have been better off. Just been left a fraction thinner on that. He obviously played to be a bit straighter on it. I can't believe he's overcut it. He's covered the pocket, yes, but this should be frame over. At top level, Paul, whenever your opponent misses their last ball, and you come to table all the, with all yours on the table, regardless of the layout, you should be favourite to win the frame. I think he might be in a spot of bother next shot. Well, he's got the total snooker. Not an obvious or easy one cushion. He can go off the top cushion, but it's hard to pick the angle when you're this close. Yeah, no, and uh, as you can see, when you are that close, you just can't see the angle. You're playing from instinct, really. Now, David has the option, if he wants it, to pop the yellow over the pocket. Looks like he's going to play red onto that yellow, which is a pretty good choice. You'd like the red to stay near the corner pocket, make it easy to get on that red at the bottom of the table, or have an easy red at the bottom of the table once he plays the one on the bottom rail, depending on which way around he wants to go. It's going to have to be red to left corner. Oh, straight's no good. Straight causes him a problem with his next shot. That's why it's the safety. Well, 
If in doubt, hit it as hard as you can. And that red should come back onto the table. But it's a free shot and a visit for David McNamara. Two minutes 40 on the clock. If he takes the better part of a minute to clear this up, he'll be 2-1 ahead with not much time left. And this could be the match right here. Oh, wow. How did that stay out? I thought that was going to drop all day, but we've seen it all weekend long. The centre pockets are severe. Well, and that one in particular. The amount we've seen missed. This is missable. Great shot. That's going to feel massive for Mark Boyle. As long as the white holds up. Oh, no. How has that gone in? That's extraordinary. Mark Boyle back in his seat, thinking he'd won 2 1. White rolls, has a think about it, goes in. And suddenly he's 2 1 down with pretty much no time to do anything about it. It almost looked like that white picked up speed. Halfway down the table, I thought, well, that's the right line for the corner, but it was never going to reach. But it kept going and it kept going. And I think Mark thought the same as me. He turned away, sat down, and thought, well, that's the frame done. Very unfortunate for Mark Boyle, but David McNamara. Won't care. He's happy. Right. I cannot believe that went in. 2-1. McNamara. Should be 2-1 Boyle. Oh, and they've... <laughs> they decided he's enough enough after the break. So will that go down as 3-1? I think what happened, the, the shot clock, there might have been a little issue with the shot clock. I think it actually ran out, it but it ran didn't out. run out Thank on our pardon. screen. Okay. So 2-1. Wow. Feels like a big moment, that McNamara beating Boyle from an in-off. That could have been Boyle home and host. Here we go. Let's have another look at this. Black goes in so long before the white into the same pocket. He's won the frame there. Looks like it's stopping. Seems to accelerate a little bit. Then he starts to worry. How on earth does that follow it in? Halfway down, that didn't look likely. Absolutely incredible. Well, that keeps the group alive because Mark Boyle would have been three from three. Suddenly, McNamara joins Boyle and Fitzsimmons. Three of them on four points. It's getting interesting. And you won't want to miss the next match. David Orn and Martin McIntosh, the local favourite. That's next. Match number two of the afternoon session. This is the final session of round robin group games. Ten of them. This is number two of ten. And then we reconvene at eight o'clock tonight to find a champion. Four quarterfinals, two semis and a final. One winner of the Gary Forbes Trophy. And next we take a look at David Dornan, who's already out. Played three, lost three. Martin McIntosh, very much not. Pocket rather than over the cush. And he rolls it in. Just the long plant. That's a very high tariff. Oh, well, 